Hey guys, what's up? So did you know that Akai's Master is actually this frog? Yep, yep, yep. Not Master Ugwe, not Shifu, not the Great Dragon, but this small frog. To learn how that happened, let's first go back to Akai's past. Akai lives in Stream Valley, a peaceful place full of chubby pandas. Akai, as you probably would have guessed, is a fisherman. That's what Aki does all day, fish as fish for a living. That's his routine, fish, sell his fish, eat and sleep. Then one day, for some reason not mentioned, he suddenly wanted to become a hero. Maybe he finally got bored with his life, or maybe he saw the Kung Fu Panda movie. We are not sure. But since that day, Akai started devoting himself to all sorts of heroic deeds. No matter what kind of trouble you have, Akai is here to help. No problem is too small for him. From rescuing cats to fixing broken roofs, it's all in a day's work for a hero, right? However, being, um, um, what? Big boned and clumsy as he was, he kinda caused more trouble instead. His neighbors were actually begging him to stop helping. His heart was in the right place, but his big, thick, clumsy panda butt wasn't. Nevertheless, Po, I mean Akai, refused to give up. He started thinking that if only he could join the legendary Furious Fi... I mean, legendary four oriental fighters of the KDR Riverlands, then he could really start to become a hero. He started throwing punches and kicks while he was fishing, dreaming how it would feel like if he was one of the members of the four oriental fighters. Then suddenly, Akai heard an angry voice. Weak ass punches. Wrong. Clumsy footwork. Wrong. Reflexes as slow as your internet connection. Wrong. Yet, you want to become an oriental fighter? The audacity! Something has beaten Akai's bait. Now, despite being surprised from the voice earlier, Akai jumped towards his fishing rod and tried to reel in the thing that had taken bite. The 300-pound thick panda almost got dragged into the water during the process, but eventually the fish, or whatever it was, gave up. When Akai reeled it in, he saw that it was actually just a small frog. That small frog though jumped onto Akai's head and stroked his sagely beard and said, I am the frog immortal, a disciple of the great dragon himself. I have sensed your natural talent, young one. That's why I decided to drift down the river all the way from the dragon altar. I have come here to take you as my disciple. I will show you the pinnacle of martial arts. The great heavenly Da will be within your grasps. All for the price of, um, your bait. What? Yes, 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 young one. In all of your bait, yes. The, that also includes the second pile of bait. Yeah, yeah, behind you. Yes, that one. Don't scrip on me now. So Aki believed the frog, and thus, the story of the master and disciple had begun. Aki was thrilled to finally learn martial arts. For three years, Aki learned martial arts from the frog immortal. He almost even quit at the third year. However though, he persevered until he finally mastered his very own technique called Panda Punches. I know right, imagine Bruce Lee having his techniques called Human Punches. Even Saitama has better sounding moves. In that case, I'll use my own final move. Serious Punch! Anyways, after that, Akai was finally doing some real hero work from catching thieves to saving villages from wild beasts. Whenever he's not doing some hero work, Akai and his master would relax and do some fishing. Things had gone smoothly ever since Akai met the immortal frog. Even his doubtful neighbors before now considers him a real hero. However though, Akai was still not satisfied. The heroes of legends had great mystical weapons, like a legendary spear or a powerful sword, while all he had was a fishing rod. And he had never heard of any hero of legends weighing 300 pounds. What he really wanted was to be the fifth member of the oriental fighters. 
to be famous and well respected by everyone. He voiced out all of this stuff to his master and to his surprise, the immortal frog's face was red with anger. With quick movements, the immortal frog punched Aki's gut and sent the huge panda rolling. Is that all you're after? Did you practice martial arts just for the opinion of others? All of those hardships you went through just to be praised? Aki stood up and answered his teacher. But master, isn't that the whole part of being a hero? To be known by the people and be told as one of the legendary heroes through their stories? The immortal frog looked at his student and then answered, Becoming a hero is far more than simply being a part of someone's storybook. In order to be a true hero, you must make the ultimate sacrifice. Ultimate sacrifice? On what? Ake just couldn't understand what his master was saying. In the few days that followed, Ake trained even harder to polish his panda panchos. He wanted to achieve his dreams, and that meant refining his martial arts to an even higher level. One day, the four oriental fighters that Ake idolized showed up on his village. The oriental fighters apparently had a mission within the area and had to stay there for days. Seeing Zilong, Wanwan, Ling, and Baksha in person made our fanboy Akai ecstatic. The legendary heroes that he only dreamed about were literally within his reach. However, as he saw them practicing their martial arts in the tavern's yard, he realized how inferior his panda punches were compared to their moves. He watched them secretly during their training and tried to keep up with their movements. Despite not being able to keep up, he was still thrilled at the thought that he was like training together with his heroes. Because of this, he started to skip his classes from his master, the Frag Immortal. He kept making excuses to his master and instead secretly watched the real heroes train every day. It was during these sessions that Akai accidentally came upon an information. The Great Dragon, which is the master of the Oriental fighters, never had a frog disciple. What? Instead, he had a frog servant whose job was to catch flies and other bugs within the dragon altar. Oh snap! Betrayal! This frog though was banished from the dragon altar because it secretly learned martial arts from watching the Great Dragon. Ironically, it's pretty much the same on what Akai had been doing right at that moment. Akai didn't see it that way though. He felt betrayed and furious. He stopped going to the Frog Immortal's martial arts lesson and instead went to the Dragon Altar. He wanted to learn martial arts from the Great Dragon himself. However, when he arrived, he learned that the Great Dragon was under solitary meditation. The oriental fighters were amused by Akai. A panda learning martial arts? How cute. The heroes taught Akai some moves from time to time. Akai though, already learning the basics from the frog immortal, flourished under the training of Zilong. The heroes were surprised with Akai's progress. Because of this, Zilong personally promised Akai that he would introduce him to his master, the great dragon, after its seclusion. It was finally happening. Akai will become a real hero and maybe even the fifth member of the Oriental Four. However though, it was then that disaster had struck. A major event had just happened within the Kadia Riverlands. Yu Zong had finally expelled the evil god Lie and has gained complete control over the power of the Black Dragon. With this power, he intends to go straight to the Dragon Altar and kill the big boss, the Great Dragon himself. So the four oriental fighters went out to meet and fight Yu Zong before he could even reach the Dragon Altar. I know right, there's so much stuff about that story, but let's focus on Akai for now. So while the oriental fighters was away, the naughty Xiong'e for some reason let out Sun who had been imprisoned by the Great Dragon. Yep, Sun had actually been imprisoned by the Great Dragon for centuries. They didn't specify why though, but based on Sun's story, he was pinned down under a mountain by the gods. I guess one of those gods is the Great Dragon. So Sun, pinned down under a huge ass mountain, was somehow released by Chang'e. 
Based on Chang'a's story, that's just how she is. A naughty, pain in the ass, but cute and lovable girl that is favored by the great dragon. Although, if you ask me, she's borderline villain. Anyways, Sun got out, and once he was freed, he heard that his old hometown had now been occupied by the pandas during his imprisonment. Yep, Sun's old town is the stream valley where Akai lives. So, Sun was furious when he learned of this. Maybe there was some feud between the pandas and monkeys before? That we don't know, but nonetheless, an angry monkey was now heading straight to Stream Valley with a vow to eliminate everyone in it and take back the land. So with this, can we consider Sun evil? Well, he did say he'd eliminate them all. Now, Akai, who was also at the dragon altar at that moment, heard all of this news. Akai heard of Yuzong coming to kill the great dragon and of the four oriental fighters setting off to have an epic fight with Yuzong as well as the news about Sun escaping and is currently on its way to kill the residents of the stream valley. Akai though was tormented on what to do. Should he follow the oriental fighters to fight Yuzong? That way he can distinguish himself before the great dragon and that will certainly earn him a seat as the fifth oriental fighter. On the other hand though, his village, neighbors and friends are all about to be destroyed by the wrathful son. He knew that his fellow pandas didn't stand a chance against the demigod monkey. Then, Akai suddenly felt something on his shoulder. He looked and realized that it was the spot where his master, the frog immortal, had always sat. He then remembered the words of his master. A true hero fights for the people and not for the glory. On that day, Sun arrived at the entrance of Stream Valley. He roared in rage and smashed down his golden staff. He announced to everyone that he would wipe out all of the pandas in the village and that they should get ready to meet their doom. The crowd of pandas was struck with fear. They had no idea what's going on, but one thing was for sure. They knew that the demigod in front of them could easily achieve the threats it made. From the trembling crowds though, came forth a lone figure. It was the Frog Immortal. The Frog Immortal faced off the Mighty Sun alone in battle. And to everyone's surprise, the tiny frog stood his ground and was able to go toe to toe with Sun as they exchanged blows. But soon enough, Sun displayed his true might, showing everyone why even the gods themselves had feared him. With a sickening body blow, Sun sent the frog immortal's limp body hurling through the air. But as the frog was about to hit a concrete wall, he was caught mid-air by the hook of a fishing rod. Akai had arrived and he was furious at what he had just witnessed. Despite his fury though, he took his intense glare off Sun and helped his master. This time, Akai and the frog immortal joined hands and fought Sun together. And it was a battle of epicness. Akai and Frog Immortal covered each other's back as they faced off multiple shadow clones of Sun. The three of them danced with death as they exchanged life-ending blows and evaded fatal hits within inches. And in the most crucial moment of their fight, Sun saw his chance and dove in for the kill. However, right at the last second, Akai mustered his strength and blocked Sun's powerful golden staff with his very own technique, the Panda Punches. That would have been epic, if not for the name, Panda Punches. Anyways, with that insane Panda Punch, which I can't even imagine how it looks like, Sun apparently got surprised and impressed. <sighs> You're that bad for a flabby panda. The amused son gave Akai and the frog immortal a chance to speak. And then the misunderstanding was solved like magic. I don't even know what the hell kind of misunderstanding was that. I mean, this monkey was about to have a panda genocide just moments ago. Maybe he thought that the pandas killed off the monkeys that lived on Stream Valley before? If you've been in prison for centuries, well, maybe take a chill pill first and get some details before you decide to wipe out a whole race. 
Anyway, Monkey Gun, Akai learned his life lesson, Master and Student kissed, I mean, made up, and they lived happily ever after. Fishing fishes. I wonder what happened to the Oriental guys and Yuzong though. Well, the end.